Uh, Robin Boardman is with us, who is a senior coordinator for the Extinction Rebellion, uh, who marched yesterday for environmental issues. Uh, Dr. Denny Pizer is here as well, director of the Global, Global Warming Policy Foundation. Uh, Robin, good morning to you. You've, you, you. you've got your Twitter lot out already saying that you're going to be on LBC, so you seem quite well organised. How was your day yesterday? Morning. Uh, good morning, Andrew. Yeah, I had a great day yesterday. I think it was, um, it was beautiful seeing so many people out on the streets supporting what they believe in. Yes, and what is it uh, that you believe in? Well, we believe in the science. We believe that we are facing an existential crisis right now. The UN has given us 12 years to dramatically change our society if we want to try and stop the threats of climate breakdown and the ecological crisis from wiping out humanity. Hmm. Well, that sounds a bit uh, dire. I, I'm not, not sure I really understand uh, exactly why. So you think the science cannot be denied. Uh, and why the need for disruption and protest, Robin? <clears throat> well, I thought I had my whole life ahead of me before I found out about climate breakdown. I'm 21 years old. Now this escalating crisis demands escalating action. Have you been watching videos on YouTube of, of, of things or how did you get educated uh, on this subject? What, what's been your main source of information? You're only 21 years of age. Well, I've been listening to talks online. I've been listening to my professors at university. And, you know, I read the IPCC reports that have been coming out, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, a UN endorsed body. And what they've been saying is that we are facing this horrendous risk and I think that if we are facing a horrendous risk, you know, the complete loss of life on this planet, then we should do everything that's in our power to do something about it. All right. Well, let's uh, I'll, I'll come back to the protests and the disruption in just a second. But Dr. Benny Pizer is with us, director of the Global, Global Warming Policy Foundation. Uh, Dr. Pizer, you're not a believer, are you, in, um, in, in climate change, at least not to this level? Would that characterize well, your views? Well, of course, we accept that climate change is happening and we accept that uh, we contribute to climate change uh, through our CO2 emissions. Uh, I don't think that is really the issue. The big debate uh, is not about the basic science. It's about how fast and how significant it will uh, happen. And there are quite a number of scientists who don't think we face extinction in 12 years. Mm. Uh, did you say 12 years, Robin? I said that the, the UN has given us 12 years to seriously act on climate change or else we face an existential threat in the future. OK, well, Dr. Pizer, look, we, there's an awful lot of people with some very strong views uh, on this. Can you, yeah. can you sort of refute that? If we don't get going now, if we don't get the ball rolling, we're all in big trouble. No, I can't refute that at all. I think they, they have every right to protest. Um, but what I would say is that in reality, I think people in the climate movement are beginning to realize that governments are not taking that very seriously. Uh, there are many, many other issues they take more seriously. Um, the British government, incidentally, is one of the few governments who, who's actually done more than most other countries. But they have to be very careful, uh, the, the, the protesters, what they wish for. You just need to look at France, where we had a protest yesterday of more than 250,000 people against the very policies that the climate movement has uh, promoted. So in France, we have the carbon tax on, on uh, petrol and diesel, and um, people are extremely concerned about the implications of radical policies on their livelihoods. I mean, we have lots of people who can't heat their homes uh, in Britain uh, in the winter because the heating is becoming more expensive as a result of these policies. So you have to really weigh up what kind of policies are politically viable. OK, so Robin Boardman, have you weighed all that sort of uh, stuff up? And I also note that yesterday there was a protest, those fuel protests that Dr. Pizer is talking about, uh, Robin. There, w there was somebody run over yesterday because they surrounded a car and they started banging on top of it. Now, if you start blocking bridges, people start getting extremely frustrated. Have you thought about that element? Of course, we thought about that element. In fact, we told the police a week beforehand exactly what we were going to be doing on those bridges and what we were going to be blocking them off. And they said that they've used that, that, that system of redirecting traffic before. And in fact, they used it in the London Marathon. So they were quite well prepared for that kind of traffic congestion. On the point of, you know, 
how people are going to deal with this and how people feel about it. I don't understand how we can be asking questions about lifestyle at this point. You know, I'm thinking about my future here. I'm thinking about whether I'm going to have a future, whether I'm going to be able to put food on the table because of the effects of what's happening. We're looking at mass starvation across the planet. And even here in the UK, you know, if we have another heat wave like we just have, we can chat to farmers and they're going to tell you and they're not going to be able to put the same amount of food out. Now let's think about El Nino as well. If that kicks in and another heat wave, you know, we're looking at food shortages right here in the UK. OK, so you, you probably don't like fracking very much uh, either as, as, as a means of providing energy to, 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 uh, to live the life that we do um, uh, over here. But I, I'd like to return to the subject of disruption. What's next for, for this movement? You've got Extinction uh, R- Rebellion. Are you going to give people warning uh, like you did with this one when you're going to block bridges? What's the next uh, plan of action for you? Because you, you're you getting a fair bit of press over this. Absolutely, yeah. So next week um, in London, we'll continue our disruption. This protest yesterday was just the beginning of what we are oh, we are God. building as a movement. All right, what are, so gonna, Wednesday, what are you going to do Thursday, next then? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah. we'll what, be what are you gonna the do? streets of... That we're going to be going to the streets of London and using peaceful roadblocks to peaceful highlight roadblocks. the issue and create economic disruption. Because right. that's the only thing at this point on, this government on, is going on to On recognize. Westminster Bridge, on Westminster Bridge yesterday, do you know... Um, I, I don't know where you're from, Robin, but uh, and I don't know whether you've ever been in, for instance, Thomas's Hospital, have you? I haven't no, been no. in that hospital. Uh, no, you, don't know where, you don't know that one? I haven't been in that hospital, no. No, but do you know that one? Yes. OK, well, that's on the south side. Of, of Westminster Bridge. It's right opposite the Houses of Common. How were people getting to that in ambulances yesterday? Or if people are going to go and visit relatives in there and take treatment, uh, or, or just, you know, for a fairly stressful time of their life, how did they get there? There's also the Evelina Children's Hospital there. How did people get there? Were you happy to disrupt uh, their, their visits to that hospital, for instance? Well, like I explained earlier, we gave the police plenty of notice around our, our peaceful protest, and we told them exactly where we're going to be doing it. So they were able to redirect the traffic, the ambulances, and other kinds of emergency services to those um, two hospitals, just like that one. So if you're on the, but if you're on the north side of the river, the which, which, which bridge would they have taken to get to Thomas's? If, um... Well, we left um, London Bridge and Vauxhall Bridge available for emergency services. OK. And, um, and, and what are you planning this weekend? And do you expect to get uh, drivers so frustrated that you're, you're actually risking your physical health? Well, we are willing to make a sacrifice when it comes to this existential threat that we're facing. Right. We're currently losing species at a rate um, faster than when an asteroid hit our planet 65 million years ago, wiping out the dinosaurs. And we're prepared to do what it takes to create that kind of disruption. Right. Because at this point, it's all the government is going to recognise. We are in an escalating crisis and protests and rallies and marches and petitions have failed. They've failed to create that change and the government has failed to act on them. Well, let, so the, vegans, point, let the, demand... ve- the vegans get terribly upset as well. Do, so do anti-hunt saboteurs. So do, so do people who don't like, you know, you know, different types of clothing and where it comes from. If everybody starts protesting like you are, this, uh, this, this town gr- grinds to a halt as people are going about their business. Um, but you think that your cause is bigger than everyone else's, right? I think that the government is criminally negligent of what is happening to, our, to, to the livelihoods of people in this country. And when the government is criminally negligent of people's lives, then it, is, and it has broken the social contract and, yeah. it, and, there, and the, no, therefore no longer has a right to rule. And therefore I think that needs to be changed. And that's why we're demanding that a citizens' assembly be put in place. Okay. Ordinary people to be able to vote in our future and be able to decide those kind of decisions that you just mentioned. A people's assembly? A citizen's assembly. Citizens assembly. We've got one. No, this would be a citizens' assembly decided by sortition, the random selection of people from across the country who would be representative of this population. This is all getting so a, if, this is all getting a bit druid, Wiccan, Antifa. I don't know whatever it is. It, it's getting slightly marginal, isn't it? Well, no, we have people's representatives. Br- English world. common law goes back a fair way. It hasn't done us too badly. We have sortition in six countries across the world, and in every single one of those countries, the results are the same. The, so, the results from sortition improve the livelihoods for local people. They improve the environment, environmental quality, 
and they increase participatory democracy, cool. which is something which, we so vitally need in this country. Which university are you at, Robin? I'm at the University of Bristol. Yeah, oh, OK, excellent. I was just uh, there at uh, Life Sciences uh, just the other day. Uh, Robin, I can sense the passion uh, you've got. Be careful this weekend. Uh, blocking traffic during um, midweek, people get really, uh, really cross. And, um, you know, all the best to you. Thank you very much indeed. A last word uh, to Dr. Benny Pizer, who is director of the Global Warming Policy Foundation. Um, an, existen- an existential crisis and, and, and a real concern for our future. Should I be more worried about climate change? Look, the point is that um, whatever you think about climate change, governments around the world have to look after their people. They have to make sure that uh, industry is working, that people can eat their homes, that people can drive to work. So there, is, there are different interests here that are colliding. Mm-hmm. The problem, I think, with the climate movement is that they are... Uh, making it far too political. They are saying that the government has no right uh, to, uh, to, to govern us, that parliament should be abolished. It sounds a bit like it's revolution, very radical baby. politics. I don't think this is going to work. Dr. Benny Pizer, Director of the Global Warming Policy Foundation. Thank you. Uh, time is 17, uh, 7.18. I'm-